today we're going to gauge up this plastic bottle and if, as you're aware plastic is becoming a very important material as far as recycling and keeping it out of the environment and that sort of thing and when you recycle materials their characteristics can change chemically so you want to test to make sure your bottle what it's going to be a water bottle or a, a can of a bottle of uh, soda or something like that that it won't burst under the conditions of use we're going to be using a, a two element 90 degree T rosette a C2A construction You'll notice it has lead wires pre-attached. We don't want to solder on this plastic bottle because we'd ruin the bottle. We'll be using GC6 alcohol as our degreaser, conditioner, and neutralizer uh, for the surface preparation. So the first step is to identify where we want to put the gauge, and we're going to put it more or less right here. I'm using the GC6 alcohol because the other degreasers, uh, most of them are very uh, they are invasive to the plastic. The alcohol is fairly benign and therefore it won't uh, change the plastic or melt it, if you will. Once I finish the degreasing, I'm going to go straight to a wet abrade with the conditioner A and uh, 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper. The plastic is too smooth right now for a, a, the kind of measurement that we're looking for. You have to have a, a certain amount of surface. So I'm going to wet this 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper and then I'm going to lightly, you don't want to go too deep into the plastic because it will deform it, lightly ablade the surface or braid the surface. I'm making a, a little rougher than it was. <clears throat> Take a dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters and clean that surface. <clears throat> You'll notice now that it's got a pretty burnished look to it. I'll take a cotton tip applicator I'll finish the scrubbing of this uh, area because we want to get all the organic materials and leftover chunks of plastic that might be here. Clean those up. So I'm taking the conditioner A and I'm scrubbing with a cotton tip applicator. And as, as usual, between each one of these wet steps we dry. We don't want the material to dry on the surface. It would recontaminate it. And since I'm going to be using the Sinoacryl Adhesive Embon 200, I need to get the surface pH back to the right so that the, the uh, Embon 200 will stick to the right pH. Uh, right now it's fairly acidic. It's around 2 or 3. And I need to get it back to either neutral or slightly basic. So I'm going to apply the Neutralizer 5A, the blue tip bottle, and scrub with the Neutralizer 5A. This is doing the final cleaning operation and setting the pH back to a nominal uh, basic or neutral or slightly basic. So I've finished my surface preparation. I'm now going to lay out on the glass plate the strain gauge that I'm going to apply. I'll be using the PCT 3M tape. Uh, this is the new material that we just introduced. In order to keep it from curling up too much, I want to stretch it just a little bit. And I'm going to tape this to the side of my uh, table here. Now, because I'm going to be using pre-leaded gauges, I've got to be careful on how I put the, the tape on here. I'm going to put it across the gauge so it doesn't pull on the wires so much. Putting on a chemically clean glass plate. And then I'm going to move my bottle back into position. Lifting at a shallow angle, I'm going to remove the gauge handling tape from the glass plate. I'm going to get it in the appropriate alignment. One gauge in the axial direction and one in the hoop. Typical of what you would think of a thin wall pressure vessel. Then going to expose the bonding surface of the gauge. And I'm going to apply the Embon 200 catalyst. I'm going to hit on the inside of the neck of the bottle eight or ten times because I don't want to use a lot of this material. It just basically has to make the gauge blush. Then I wait a full one minute of air dry time. I guess you're wondering why this bottle has this DigiKey label on here. We've just recently returned from the sensor show in San Jose, California, and they gave us a bottle. And we figured we'd take this opportunity to use it in a demonstration of our 
uh, abilities on plastics and composites. I've now waited my full minute of uh, air dry time for the catalyst. I have my gauze sponge here at the ready. I'm going to put a single drop of the adhesive at the cusp of the tape and the, uh, the part. Stretch it taut and then smooth it over and then follow with my thumb. And we'll put one minute of thumb pressure on this uh, while it's curing. We've now waited for our two minutes under the tape. That's one minute of thumb pressure and then two minutes under the tape. And this plastic bottle, we're going to remove the gauge handling tape, pulling it 180 degrees back on itself, putting the adhesive system into shear as opposed to peel. And you'll note I'm holding down the lead wires so they don't uh, have a problem. And I'm going to go ahead and pull off the rest of the tape. It kind of sheared there. Plastic bottles. The reason they're recycling them is because there's so much space taken up in landfills that can be reduced by using a plastic bottle that's recyclable, leaving space for those materials that cannot be recycled. We're conscious here at Micro Measurements of Recycling, we have a right recycling program. And then now we're going to hook this up to a, a P3 instrument and we're going to make a couple of measurements. Okay. Now we've hooked up the two element rosette to a P3 strain indicator and recorder. We've uh, activated the channels, told it it's quarter bridge, put in the proper uh, gauge factor so everything is scaled in micro strain. So now at this point we want to balance out our zero. Starting at zero. And while it's not perfect, it's going to generate what we believe to be the classic um, thin wall pressure vessel uh, work. And if you squeeze the bottle slightly, you see how the hoop direction, the channel number one, is normally going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about two times that of channel number two. And of course it's going to make a liar out of me. Apparently this is not behaving like a thin walled pressure vessel because of the way I'm loading it. I'm sure if I put, were able to put pressure in it that the hoop direction, channel one, would be anomaly twice that of the axial direction. This demonstrates that our gauge is bonded properly, it's giving us good results, good zero return, and we're ready to make our test.